Hi, the time has come for the Tuesday, September 8th, 2020, virtual regular Waukegan City Council meeting. Roll call, please. Alderman Turner. Here. Alderman Rivera. Alderman Present. Rivera. Alderman Florian. Present. Alderman Taylor. Present. Alderman Bolton. Present. Alderman Seeger. Present. Alderman Mozio. Alderman Mozio. Alderman Mozio. Alderman River State. I'm here. Alderman Kirkwood. Present. Alderman Newsom. Present. Mayor Cunningham. Present. You have a quorum. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, next on the agenda is the uh, invocation uh, by Rabbi Jacob Rosenberg, located at 200 Cook Road, Deerfield, Illinois, North Suburban Church. And I think uh, he is being substituted with Ms. Deborah Stackhouse to lead us in the invocation. Okay. Okay, all rise, please. Okay, um, <clears throat> Alvino Malkin, you are Father our King. We come before you in the name of Yeshua the Messiah, your Son. We thank you that we're here to honor your name, that thy will be done here in heaven, on earth as it is in heaven. And Abba, we thank you that um, for uh, the city of Waukegan, I thank you for the mayor, for the council, for the the aldermen and for all the leaders here in Waukegan, I ask that your that your will would be done. I pray that um, that you they would be filled with righteousness and the, with wise motives, and and to make every decision that would be pleasing to your will in the name of Yeshua. I pray that um, that all in attendance will respect and honor you and your word according to Psalm 1957. And, we, and most of all, we pray for a wall of protection, a fire that will surround them and surround Waukegan. I thank you, Lord, for the things you're doing in this city. I pray for the protection of the citizens and that, and that, that God, that um, your, your heart and your, your will will be spread out across uh, Waukegan and that um, it will be a city, it will be a city that we give glory and honor to you. I thank you, God, for the wisdom and for the understanding. The spirit of wisdom and understanding will be upon each leader here. They will be guided by your will. They'll be guided by your wisdom. They will be gu guided by your understanding of your moral law, the understanding of, the, uh, of, of your place in society. So, Father, we just thank you. I ask that you will touch each one here tonight as they discuss uh, things that needs to be done and taken care of in Waukegan. And so we thank you in the name of Yeshua, we pray. Amen. Amen. There's comments. Uh, we first want to give a special uh, congratulations to Mr. Jonathan Thompson, who has been named the new chief executive officer of Nielsen Massey, Nielsen Massey Vanillas, 
which is a company located in Waukegan, Illinois. He's just been appointed. We, uh, we want to congratulate him in his new uh, leadership role over there at uh, Vanilla Massey uh, Vanilla Corporation. Uh, second, uh, as you all know, we've uh, been hit hard with some very important and strong faith-based leaders in our community. One of them being Pastor Arthur Gass, who also had a dual role as the Black uh, Ch Chamber of Lake County Chairman, Founder, and CEO. Uh, just recently, we found out that there was a, a, another passing of one of our leaders of Shiloh Baptist Church, uh, located in Waukegan, uh, Pastor Wallstone E. Francis, who was born on January 30, 1946, in Nassau, Bahamas. Uh, we do have a resolution that we have now, but it was not on the agenda. We will bring that forward to you next week. However, um, because the services are going to be this Friday, correction, this Thursday and Friday, I think close out on Saturday, we will be uh, we'll presenting the proclamation to them, but we'll read it at next council meeting. Um, uh, we want to send a special uh, uh, condolences message from all of us to uh, Mr. Anton Matthews who's uh, I think a friend to just about everybody uh, within City Hall, certainly in our leadership role. His father passed uh, just recently, so his condolences go out to him and his family as well. Uh, COVID-19, since we last met, our Region 9, Lake County, McHenry counties have been placed at warning levels for coronavirus spread. I've said it before, but I, uh, I'll repeat it myself. We're following the medical advice we do not want mitigation efforts or shut, down, shut things down. But if the numbers get worse or continue in the direction that it is going, that will happen. Thank you to everyone who has followed the medical guidelines and we continue to ask uh, you to please follow the threes, three Ws. Wear your face covering, wash your hands, watch your social distancing, while we are all know that we're open, we're certainly not over. Uh, this is something that all of us must be mindful of. Young men and young ladies, the numbers that are rising uh, happens to be in that, I think is 10 to 25 age group. You simply must start following the guidelines that are set forth. It is your responsibility, along with ours, to adhere to these medical guidelines. If you do not, you will push our entire county and city back into that stage three. Uh, remember to also be safe and follow the medical recommendations when you travel to other cities. We only have a few more weeks for everyone to fill out the census. Remind your neighbors, friends, and family that it's time. We must get the census completed with a number uh, uh, and, and the upswing for our overall population in Waukegan. Lunch with the mayor. Waukegan Main Street is hosting uh, the 35th annual lunch with the mayor on Monday, September 14th at noon. Due to COVID-19, we won't be in person this year, but instead will be held online. While COVID-19 has a somber impact uh, on this past year for all of us, we will try to spread some excitement by sharing some of the promising news from Waukegan and our united vision for Waukegan for the next four to five years. Okay, with that being said, that's all that I have uh, for mayor's comments. Next uh, is resolution, proclamation, presentation, and appointments. Uh, there's a motion by Alderman Rivera, second by Alderman Seeger, to appoint Jamie Santiago to the Waukegan Planning and Zoning Commission. Are there any questions to the motion? Roll call, please. Alderman Turner. 
Aye. Alderman Rivera. Aye. Alderman Florian. Aye. Alderman Taylor. Aye. Alderman Bolton. Aye. Alderman Seeger. Aye. Alderman Mosio. Aye. Alderman Kirkwood. Aye. Alderman Newsom. Alderman Newsom. Sorry, aye. <laughs> thank you. Motion passed, sir. Hey, thank you. A motion by Alderman Bolton, a second by Alderman Kirkwood to ratify appointment of Lydia Lewis to the Joaquin Historic Preservation Commission. Oh, in there. Any questions to the motion? Roll call, please. Alderman Turner. Aye. Alderman Rivera. Aye. Alderman Florian. Aye. Alderman Taylor. Aye. Alderman Bolton. Aye. Alderman Seeger. Aye. Alderman Mosio. Aye. Alderman Kirkwood. Aye. Alderman Newsom. Aye. Motion passed. Motion to ratify the appointment of Robert Freedom to Joaquin Public Library Board of Trustee. There's a motion by Alderman Kirkwood, second by Alderman Mozio. Any questions to the motion? Roll call, please. Alderman Turner. Aye. Alderman Rivera. Aye. Alderman Florian. Aye. Alderman Taylor. Aye. Alderman Bolton. Aye. Alderman Seeger. Aye. Alderman Mosio. Aye. Alderman Kirkwood. Aye. Alderman Newsom. Aye. Motion passed. Motion passed and carried. Thank you, ma'am. Item D uh, on the agenda, as you see, there is a CLC Lakeshore Campus Expansion Project Overview. And this overview will be presented by the president of the College of Lake County, Dr. Lori M. Suttick. At this time, Dr. Lori, Lori M. Suttick will be taking the mic. Thank you, Mayor Cunningham, and good evening, everyone. Um, thank you very much for the opportunity to be here, and for those of you that I have not met, um, I am Lori Suttick, and I've had the pleasure and honor of serving as president at College of Lake County for the past two years. Um, before we begin our presentation, I would like to extend a word of thanks and appreciation on behalf of the CLC Board of Trustees and my college team to Mayor Cunningham and his team uh, for their partnership uh, and support uh, to get the Lakeshore Campus Building Project to this point today. Um, the College of Lake County is very excited uh, about the Lakeshore Campus Student Center, not only because it's finally here, but because of the transformative opportunities it will be providing to fulfill the college's equity in access and success goals. Over the past year and a half, the college with the support of the Board of Trustees has been making investments to expand programming and access to quality education at our Lakeshore campus, some of which Dean Ruiz will talk briefly about uh, shortly. However, um, we now move forward with the long awaited building project that if done well in partnership with our community has the promise to bring to life our shared vision for a vibrant urban campus environment that creates synergy between what happens on the campus with what is happening outside of the campus in ways that are meaningful and relevant and beneficial to those that we serve, our students, businesses, industry, and our community partner agencies. So we will be facilitating some community listening sessions during the fall semester at our Lakeshore campus to further explore and envision the urban campus dynamic and culture that we're all looking uh, to create together. But today the college's goal is to provide you with a high level overview of the Lakeshore Campus Student Center building project, the status, the focus and our next steps. And to do that, I've brought two of my esteemed colleagues with me 
who will be instrumental in getting and keeping this project on track. We have our Lakeshore Campus Dean, Jesus Ruiz, and Mike Welch, our Director of Facilities, whom I'm going to turn it over to right now. Uh, good evening, uh, my name is Mike Welch. I am the Director of Facilities uh, for the College of Lake County. Um, as Dr. Uh, Sudek mentioned, this has been uh, an exciting project, uh, long overdue. So um, we're gonna go through, just kind of give you a high level update of where we've been kind of over the last year. Um, so you guys can see what where we're moving forward to. Uh, the good news is, is we do have good news to share. So progress is proceeding on the Lakeshore campus. Um, so earlier in the year, we had to do some work with the city of Waukegan about um, rededicating an alleyway. We had some existing easements uh, that were basically going right through the site. So we had to get that uh, rectified. Uh, also in February, uh, we held a vendor fair. Um, and what that does was uh, we encourage a lot of the small businesses or minority businesses um, to really get to a, into a room and meet with some of these large contractors. Um, it allows them to change you know, um, business cards and get them kind of in the right seats. Uh, and then in March, the project actually did go out for bid. Uh, so it's a state funded project. So the state does all the legwork as far as the bidding process is concerned. Um, and as everybody knows, in March, we got hit with coronavirus. So it kind of slowed everything down a little bit. Uh, the state had to take a new approach. Uh, typically they always have done um, hard copy bids. Um, so this is the first time that they had to take a look and do electronic bids. Um, so it did extend the bid process a little bit longer than we like, um, but the good news for the college or for the project is that extra time allowed the contractors to really get into the plans, um, able to shop it around. And as you can see, we were able to save or keep the project just under $6 million on our project budget. Um, so that was good news once we received those bids. Um, once the bids are received, the state typically has about 90 days to award a contractor. Uh, if a contractor is not awarded within that time frame, it could potentially be rebid to um, another contractor as well. Um, so as you see in this August time frame, uh, they were just able to identify a low uh, responsible bidder and that was awarded to George Solid Construction out of Wooddale, Illinois. Um, our next steps right now is George Solid Construction is waiting for their authorization to proceed. Uh, and that's really the time clock that they get. So once that is um, uh, given to George Solid, they basically have two years to start that construction project or, or to finish it. Um, so it has been awarded as far as an intent uh, for just over $30 million for the project. Um, as you can see on, on the 19th, we actually held a pre-construction meeting with the contractor, which is that picture in your upper right-hand corner. Um, and this is really kind of to talk to the contractor about the impacts of their construction, uh, what it's going to be doing to the alleyways, what it's going to be, going to be doing to Madison Street, uh, and plus the businesses and residents in that area. So taking a look, kind of the two week uh, look back and then the two week look ahead, um, we did have uh, a project labor management uh, meeting um, at the Plumbers Union uh, in Volo, Illinois on the 27th. Um, and then on the 28th, we had our first weekly meeting with the city of Waukegan and some key stakeholders as well. Uh, so on the week of the 31st, uh, we were hoping that the contractor would get their authorization to proceed letter. Uh, to date, they have not received that yet. Um, so that brings us to uh, the week of September 7th, which is our meeting today. So we wanna give you just a high level overview of what the project is and kind of the stuff that we've been working through. Um, and then some of the hurdles that we see kind of moving forward that we're trying to stay in front of as well. Um, and then moving forward to the week of September 21st, uh, September 22nd is actually the college's board meeting. So we'll kind of give our board uh, an update of the project as well. Um, and then on the 24th, we have a project update with the Main Street Group, uh, just kind of a round table where we get into, um, where we can talk about any concerns that uh, the businesses or residents may have. So some of the things that we see uh, coming up um, right away, um, because the authorization to proceed uh, is kind of the time clock. Um, so once the contractor gets that, he's gonna be moving pretty quick to get that uh, stuff out on the site. 
Um, so we envision probably the fence being installed around the site. Uh, it's going to be going from the parking garage all the way north uh, to the new Sun site, um, blocking off the alleyway, Madison Avenue, uh, and the courtyard as well, too. Um, so what we know that that's going to impact uh, pedestrians uh, and businesses that kind of use those alleyways and walkways as well. Um, so the contractor will be setting up um, some signs, uh, basically directing people to Clayton, um, to Clayton Avenue or to uh, Washington Street to get them back into the heart of the downtown. Uh, one of the first things you'll see is probably that north parking garage. Uh, and I don't know if you guys can see it, but my pointer is kind of right on it. Uh, that stair tower will probably be the first thing that will come down. Um, so that will be um, one of the very first things to do because of the transformer in that area needs to get relocated. Um, and then with all of our construction projects, we like to have a project camera installed on there as well too. Um, it's always neat to have a time-lapse video of the project. So it's a two-year project. We can get it down to a, a two-minute video, um, which we'll, we'll install as well. <coughs> Um, and that's some of the immediate uh, key issues that we've heard. Um, so some of the things that as we were um, kind of going over the project with uh, businesses and the city of Waukegan themselves, um, you know, we've heard that communication is really gonna be key on this project. Um, so the college has really taken some steps on what we can do to make sure that everybody is informed of what's going on in the project. Uh, because this is a state funded project, the contractor has a contract directly with the state College is the end user. We're building in the city of Waukegan. There's lots of moving parts that are on here. Um, so we're setting up um, some project teams to keep that communication basically streamlined. Uh, and that work has already begun. Um, so with the help of the city of Waukegan and uh, the Main Street Group, we're gonna be having direct contact with each one of these individuals uh, to make sure everything is being uh, heard. Uh, we'll also be setting up uh, a Facebook page as well to our PR team uh, and is working on that right now. Um, so we'll have key up-to-date ideas that will be on there. Uh, one of the other things that we've also know too is since we're shutting off the alleyway um, is the trash collection. Uh, it's definitely gonna be something that we need to take a look at. Uh, the college does not wanna impact any of the businesses. So we're working with our contractors on how we can uh, make that a smooth transition for the business owners. Um, one other thing too uh, that we see is uh, is the ComEd. So I mentioned about that transformer being moved uh, into uh, over by that new stairwell. Um, so right now uh, the Capital Development Board needs to pay just over $100,000 uh, for some of those electrical services to begin. Uh, as everybody knows, ComEd will not start any work until they have their check in hand. Um, so if you're not familiar with it, this is the campus site. Uh, right along here is Sheridan Road. Uh, this is 33 North Genesee. We have a connecting link that goes into 111 uh, Genesee. Uh, this is the College of Lake County's parking garage right here. Uh, so the new building will actually be just to the north of that parking garage. Uh, there will be a connecting link that goes from the parking garage into the new building and then from the new building into 33 as well too. Um, so basically you'll be able to get to all these buildings in a covered walkway uh, at some point. Um, this is Madison Avenue here. Um, so again, once the building is done, there'll be some improvements to uh, the city streetscape as well. And this is kind of the final rendering of what it'll look like uh, from just across the street from the Sheridan Road. Um, so it's a six story building, uh, partially sunken on the lower level here. Uh, the, the site does slope about nine feet from the alleyway to uh, the Sheridan Road side. Uh, it's a brick facade, a uh, large uh, glass panel that faces east, so overlooking the lake. Uh, this is a two-story library space that's here. Uh, and we also heard from the community that there's really no space for community rooms or events. Um, so we've designed this top floor basically to have three large conference room spaces, uh, all glass, uh, that has foldable partitions that can collapse and make it one large room. Uh, it does have an outdoor uh, balcony terrace as well, too. Um, so not only will you be able to hold an event up here, but you'll be able to walk outside and see great views of the lake in the city of uh, Chicago skyline. Um, and the one thing that we're proud about this building too, uh, this is a LEED Platinum building. So this is the highest rated building that uh, you can actually build from the LEED standard. So uh, we have one on our Grays Lake campus uh, that we've gotten a lot of uh, publicity about. Um, so this will be our second LEED Platinum building as well.
Um, so with that, I will turn it over to uh, Dean Ruiz. Thank you, Mike. Uh, first of all, I want to say that it's a privilege and a true honor to be addressing this council and our mayor, our community at large. Waukegan has been a home to my family and I for almost 30 years, and I'm very proud to be part of the CLC legacy in our city. The importance of this project um, cannot be understated. We are acquiring over 62,000 square feet of additional space that will house our support services, our library, our community meeting space, our welcome one-stop center, our new, brand new laboratories, career placement services, adult education will gain space with this new building. We will have four testing rooms that will accommodate our testing as well as additional community testing, our tutoring center, four general educational classrooms will be added to our space. Can we uh, advance that, Mike? I don't think I have. Thank you. Um, and as a brief uh, um, uh, example of how drastic this change will be, our current single room library will be transformed into a state-of-the-art learning space where our students will not only study, but interact and create community here at Lakeshore. Next, thank you. Uh, let me tell you a little bit more of what we have been up to at our campus. Um, throughout the last couple of years, uh, the college has been doing a lot of intentional work um, uh, in creating additional offerings and additional classes in our campus. We offer uh, more, more classes than ever. Currently, we have flexible scheduling. We have full courses um, uh, here, are, uh, or full course schedule options at our campus. We have extended our course registration deadlines and the general core offerings are guaranteed for Lakeshore. All of this work has been done with intentionality as we understand that the population we serve at our campus um, needs this flexibility. And sometimes they don't fall within the traditional college uh, student pathway. And so we wanna make sure that we are flexible and we are able to offer these, uh, these things here at Lakeshore. Next slide, please. Some of the program expansions that we've had over the last couple of years have been uh, the heating, ventilation, and air conditioning and refrigeration, HVAC, automotive, robotics, and mechatronics, and our healthcare programs. All of these are um, uh, heavily expanded on our campus um, because they are high demand, high paying fields uh, that our community has been um, asking for here at the Lakeshore campus. Next slide, please. With the addition of our student center, um, the buildings that will be left vacant once we move into our spaces will allow us to bring additional program expansion into the Lakeshore campus. We will bring um, new programs such as digital media, manufacturing, hospitality, horticulture, and entrepreneurship courses to the Waukegan community and our students here. Next slide. In addition to the new spaces created, we will also be investing heavily into renovating our current spaces, our children's learning center, our science laboratory at 33 North Genesee, and a brand new classroom at the 111 North Genesee building will be renovated fully. With this investment, the college continues its commitment to our campus and the Waukegan community. Next slide, please. As Mike mentioned uh, just a, a few moments ago, communications are going to be key as we continue to um, our endeavor with this new project. The college will provide a project updates on our website and we'll be working closely with the city of Waukegan and Main Street to keep our uh, businesses and our neighbors informed of the project and how it's going. We'll be creating social media updates and a news release is, is actually uh, going to be issued tomorrow, a uh, joint uh, news release with the city of Waukegan. And we will be looking at opportunities for a celebratory event in the near future. Next slide. Hey. The lecture advisory committee will also be key as we continue to plan and uh, move forward with this project. The lecture advisory committee is comprised of representatives from small businesses, strategic partner agencies, and community members. The advisory committee is convened by the college leadership to provide insights and guide our decisions to ensure the urban Lakeshore campus fulfills its mission to meet local community and workforce needs. Our current Lakeshore advisory committee members include myself as the dean of the campus, our chair Anton Matthews, as well as uh, many other community leaders that have been part of our community for, for many, many years. Um, thanks to all of our community members and our Lakeshore advisory committee. Um, we have been engaging with them fully as, as a college and look forward to continuing that uh, trend. Next slide. We would now open the floor up for questions. Yeah, are there any questions that we can answer at this time? Uh, 
I just want to say what a great presentation. Thank you very much for all the work that's been put into this. Thank you. Um, I have a question. You were talking in the beginning about something you need in order to start the construction. Is that something you're waiting for from the city? No, so this is, uh, this is a state funded project. So it's something from the state of Illinois that needs to get issued to the contractor. Okay, thank you. You have may already, this is Alderman Bolton, you may have already said it, indicated, when will this project possibly projectively begin? Um, so it's a two year construction process. Um, so, you know, right now we're taking a look at uh, possibly for the spring of 22, uh, 2022 to open up classes there. Mike, I, I, this is Ken Gotch, uh, Vice President for Business Services and Finance for the college. I think our question was, when did we expect the project to begin? And checking with the state this week, Mike, we learned that it's possible that we'll get the notice to receive as early as two days from today. So we're we're anxiously uh, pushing the state every day to make sure that they keep keep moving, keep this project moving forward, and and not delaying it any further. Great. Thank you. And to add to that, uh, I don't other questions? No, no. Uh, to add, yeah, to this that. is Alderman Kirkwood of the Fourth Ward where the college is situated at mm -hmm. you know, and working with the local businesses there. And certainly that construction may have some impact on those businesses. Has there been any other concerns in terms of the, not only the businesses, but some of the people that live there uh, in those particular apartment complexes that is mm -hmm. connected to uh, or close to the College of Lake County? Yeah, and, and I can answer that. So some of the things that we've been working with the city of Waukegan is kind of the, the hours of construction. So we know that there's going to be some areas of impact that are going to have some, you know, call them noisy activities. Uh, and we've let the contractors know that there are residents that are living here. So, um, you know, the city of Waukegan has uh, some guidelines for hours of construction. Um, we're definitely going to follow suit with those. Um, you know, we don't want to start early in the morning and make a lot of noise and make a lot of residents upset. So um, we are also planning on noisy activity alerts, too. So if there is a noisy uh, activity that's going to be happening, we're asking the contractor to give us a two week notice for that. So we can give those to those residents to say, hey, coming Monday, um, there's going to be some noisy you know, activities outside your windows uh, instead of them getting woken up to you know, a, a noisy activity. And then also in working with uh, Advance, the company that usually, and some of the, there's another one I know in that particular area that uh, takes care of the garbage. There's two. I know one is Advance and there's a uh, group, I believe. Uh, so have there's been some resolution on how that will be moved out of that alleyway to some other place that all the residents as well as the business people are aware of? Yeah, we, we are currently working on that right now as well, too. So there's actually, um, there's three garbage vendors. So there's uh, the advanced, there's Groot, and there's waste management. Uh, but there's also a grease trap vendor that also picks up for one of the restaurants over there as well, too. Um, so we do have a couple of options uh, that we're working with the city of Waukegan on as well, too. Um, one of those options is really kind of um, taking a look at one of the parking lot areas uh, and possibly building some type of ramp system um, so the dump trucks can get up there easily, get to the dumpsters, dump it, and then get back out. Okay, thank you very much. Okay. In addition to that, uh, Alderman, uh, I just want you to be aware that uh, in the event that we need to relocate some of those parked cars in the alley, the college is willing to uh, lend our space in the garage to accommodate those tenants. Okay, thank you, Dean. If I can add to that, can everyone hear me? Mm -hmm. Yes. Our, uh, yes to add to that, uh, what we have done on our end as well, we've kind of streamlined of who the communication person will be. Uh, we're going to be working with Josh from Main Street, uh, 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 Noel from uh, our from the city of Waukegan, who will be dealing directly either with uh, Mike Welsh. Those are three to be the primary. So if something does happen or if there is a concern, we have one person to go to and that and those individuals will handle within their own business units of how to resolve the issue. So we've talked about that and we have an ongoing, we've had ongoing conversations with what uh, with the business owners within the area. 
So uh, obviously this is gonna be kind of a moving target as we move forward. The goal here though, is to get this project moving and we are ready to call audibles as we move forward with this long awaited project with the, with the hopes of being completed uh, a second quarter, possibly third quarter, 2022. Is that pretty safe to say, Mike, uh, Madam President? Yes, sir. <laughs> Yeah, the good thing is, is we have a, um, a pretty proactive contractor. So even though he hasn't got the authorization to proceed, uh, he's already been out there working and taking a look at the site and getting stuff ready. So he's, he's really wanting to get moving on this and get done as quickly as he could. Well, thank you. Thank you, Madam President and to your team for presenting uh, uh, this high level, but uh, a very effective uh, presentation as to this long awaited project that all of us, I think collectively, whether you're on the council then or wasn't, this is a Lake County project, but certainly a huge, huge boost to our downtown area. Uh, and again, this is one of the pieces of the puzzle of rebuilding uh, the Waukegan's downtown. I'm excited, and it sounds like our legislative body, our aldermen are excited. Uh, now let's get the rest of Waukegan and of course the county excited about where we are going to rebuild uh, the College of Lake County Lakeshore campus uh, with, the, with the partnership of the city of Waukegan. Guys, take care. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you everyone for your time and please feel free to reach out. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I mean, I can hear it. I can hear him fine on on the phone. Eric, I think you, Eric, you need you need to mute Eric. Right. All right. Uh, item three. Uh, audience time, Madam Clerk. Thank you. The um, audience uh, participation will be done by David Motley, and the notes have been sent to us and received. They will be timed. They have up to three minutes. And Mr. Motley, whenever you're ready. Hear me? Can anyone hear me? Okay. I can yes, hear you. Hear. Okay, sorry, technical difficulties. Uh, I hear you. All right. Uh, the first one is from Clyde McLemore. Good evening, Mayor and Council Members. I come before you asking that Black Lives Matter movement Lake County do a mural in the street of downtown Waukegan. I want to work with our city and do this professional and as mind aesthetically. I contacted the mayor back in June as I invite to Birmingham, Alabama. Had we moved on it, then it, we would have been the first city in Illinois. I keep getting sent off and since Waukegan is the city of the county seat. The city has more black council members and the first black mayor. Seems like this council would want this. It will be done by the community of all races. It will be a community event. Clyde McLemore, Lake County Chapter, founder of Black Lives Matter. Next is from Al Klebeck. Hi, my name is Al Klebeck and a member of the Antique Outboard Motor Club. I'm from Addison, Illinois. You're probably wondering what a person from Addison is doing at a Waukegan City Council meeting. Well, Waukegan has something that Addison and the rest of the United States doesn't have. That is the 1927 Johnson Outboards Water Tower. Since the buildings around the water tower have been demolished and the water tower is still there, it must mean that the city council sees value in it and realizes that if the water tower is ever taken down, it's gone forever, never letting future generations know 
that once a mighty American manufacturing company stood there. In November of 2019, I took it upon myself to start a petition to make the 93-year-old Johnson Water Tower a historical landmark. I was quite surprised in the amount of signatures for the different states. It just goes to show that not only is the water tower important to Joaquin, but also to the nation. At this point, the petition has 350 signatures and over 800 likes on Facebook. If you have the time, please go to the petition and look at the wonderful comments people have said in regards to the water tower. As I stated in the petition, Joaquin OMC was a place that provided a means to support the families of Joaquin and the surrounding area and produced a product used worldwide for pleasure boating. The last I know of is that the subject of the water tower is that it has been tabled in 2017. Personally, I think it's time to go forward and actually make the water tower a landmark. Not only can the water tower be a symbol for OMC, but also a symbol of all of the industry that was at the lakefront. I can visualize the Johnson Outboards water tower welcoming all the boaters from Lake Michigan for years to come. I could also visualize a museum showing the history of OMC and attracting visitors. In regards to paying for the restoration of the water tower, I think crowdfunding could be the source and also soliciting big companies related to boating and recreation. I would be willing to help in the fundraising. The water tower only has to be cosmetically restored and does not have to function. If you want to get an estimate on how much it would cost, I have the name of a company willing to give an estimate. I envy the members of the city council. You have the opportunity to make the decisions that will shape the lakefront for the next 100 years. I just hope that the Johnson Outboards Tower is part of that lakefront. Thank you for the time to speak and please don't hesitate to contact me. The next is from Vicki Scott. To whom it may concern, I am a longtime resident of Waukegan. We have a beautiful city with great potential. Growth. What is your three to five year plan for the city of Waukegan besides bringing more gambling to the city? Side note, gambling is not the answer. What are your plans to build up the downtown area and beach slash lakefront? If so, please share your ideas and timelines. How are the residents tax dollars helping meet your goals? What is the role and responsibility of the city planner? What are they working on? Could they share their agenda in this meeting? Committee meetings. How are the meeting times communicated to the residents? Crime. Is it possible to talk more about how crime is being addressed? Who is responsible for sharing this information with the residents? Council meeting agenda. Is it possible to slow down when reading the agenda? Thank you for your time, Mrs. Vicki Scott. The next is from Margaret Carrasco. Mayor, killing, 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 killing. Looting, 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 looting. Crime, 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 crime. Mayor, this morning there was yet another killing in the city of Waukegan and you said nothing and you did nothing. It is your job to communicate and protect the families of Waukegan. And lastly, the taxpayers have a question for you, Mayor. Are you an investor for one of the marijuana dispensaries that were selected for Illinois Lottery? Is your only plan for the city besides casino gaming? If there's one thing you have proven over and over again, and that is that you are useless as a mayor, Margaret yeah. Carrasco. <laughs> and then I've been asked to read the following uh, information from the clerk's office. The city of Waukegan has received the same form letter from two recipients, as we are always looking to condense repetitive comments in the interest of time. Here's a list of persons submitting this letter. Taylor Day, 
Leslie Guzman. I'm here to express my disapproval that you approve not only the $30,000 to restock riot gear for the Joaquin Police Department, but $370,000 in police station interior renovations as well. Additionally, the comments made by Third Ward Alderman Moisio claiming that our city streets need more police were highly alarming. Our city currently gives 48.82% of our general fund to the Waukegan Police Department. Our community cannot afford to spend another dime on the over-policing of our constituents. Recently, a petition was submitted to the Waukegan City Council calling for reallocating city funds, increasing equity, and funding social services. This petition also called for a 50% reduction in the 2021 fiscal year budget for the Waukegan Police Department. As your constituent, I am here to voice my support for the demands of the submitted petition. We cannot afford to continue stripping our community of resources we need. This council has not represented my best interests, and I hope the demands of this petition, including the 50% reduction in police funding, are met. Sent from my iPhone. And that concludes audience time for this evening, Madam Clerk. <coughs> Mayor's on mute. Yeah, I was on. I apologize. Uh, thank you, thank you, David, for reading that. And looks like we did. Uh, everyone did hear, and they did. The fee did go to all of the residents that we know of. Okay. Item four. Motion by Alderman Newsom, uh, second by Alderman Mozio. to uh, item four for consent agenda items A, 4A through 4M. Are there any questions to the motion? Yeah, Mayor. All right, we got, uh, on the second, we got Alderman Rivera, I saw, and Alderman Turner. Alderman Rivera. Yeah, I'd like to pull out on uh, an F, please. Okay, Alderman Turner. I'd like to pull out item C. Item E and item M. Oh, wait a minute. Here. Item M? Yes. Okay. Okay. Uh, motion by Alderman Newsom, second by Alderman Mozio. Items 4A through B. Items 4D. Items 4G. Through L. Any other questions to the motion? Okay. I will read the I will read the motion. Items 4A. Motion to approve the regular meeting minutes from Monday, August 17, 2020. <laughs> Items B, 4B proclamation, diaper need awareness week. Item 4D, motion to authorize the marriage to execute a contract with water treatment specialist LLC in amount not to exceed $67,600 for, sep for September 2020 to August 2021 and $69,628 for, for September 2021 to uh, August 2022 for the purpose of providing class A operating support services to the city's water plant superintendent. Due to the nature of these services, a waiver for competitive bidding process is granted pursuant to the professional services exemption section 2-458 parentheses I parentheses 4 in a high degree of skills exemption 2-458 parentheses I parentheses 5. Item G, motion to approve vendor payments dated September 2nd, 2020 in a total amount of $3,313,688.86. Item H, Motion to approve regular payroll dated August 28, 2020 in a total amount of $1,636,744.08. Item I, motion to approve retro group 20, 30, 40 dated 
August the 28th, 2020, in a total amount of $51,557.50. Item J, most to approve PBLC holiday buyback dated August 28th, 2020, in a total amount of $800.94. Item K, most to approve comp time payout dated August 28th, 2020, in a total amount of $3,507.13. Item L, motion to approve fiscal 20 unused vacation payout dated August 28, 2020, in a total amount of $679.70. Any questions to the motion? Yeah, hey, Mayor, if I may, just uh, out of curiosity, if someone could, could, you or whomever, tell me, explain what the retro group 20, 30, and 40 are. What, what's retro group? What is that referencing? And I only ask because I can't see it on the uh, on the agenda. The agenda was taken down from the website, so I can't look at the attached documents. But if someone could explain what that is, just out of curiosity. Uh, uh, I think I don't know if Tina is Tina. Are you still on? Or maybe I don't know if that's. It sounds like there's something that should be in the contract. I don't have that with you right now. Okay. Uh, Tina, if not, Alderman, I can get that to you first thing yeah. in the morning. I'm almost yeah, certain. Yeah, I'm almost certain it is is there with how we uh, with the contractors we have to pay out that way. But I'll get an answer to you in the morning. I do apologize okay. for not having it. Thank you, sir. Appreciate it. Mm -hmm. All right. Any other questions to the motion? Roll call, please. Alderman Turner. Aye. Alderman Rivera. Aye. Alderman Florian. Aye. Alderman Taylor. Aye. Alderman Bolton. Aye. Alderman Seeger. Aye. Alderman Mosio. Alderman Mosio. Aye, I'm sorry, aye. Alderman Kirkwood. Aye. Alderman Newsom. Aye. Motion passed. Okay. Uh, Alderman, Alderman, Ta uh, Alderman Turner, um, I just re received a text from Tamika HR. And I apologize. I uh, should have went with her because part of the bargaining use. Group 20 is non-bargaining. Group 30 is P PD brass. And group 40 is fire brass. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Yes. Thank you. Uh, there's a motion, uh, motion on the floor by Alderman I think it's Turner, uh, second by Alderman Rivera, most to approve door-to-door -door cookie ordering solicitations from January 1 to January 17, 2021 by the Girl Scouts of Greater Chicago and Northwest Indiana. Any questions? Alderman Turner, you had a question? Yes, sir. Uh, so I recall, and you made too, that uh, I think the last meeting, we approved uh, Halloween trick-or-treat hours, right? And they were specified on a date and, and, and a time frame, certain hours for that. And I'm just curious, we don't mention any hours limitations. So they have from January 1st to January 17th, but they don't say like up until 6 p.m. or, you know, there's no time constraint on that. Is, is that? We held, didn't we hold that over? We didn't do anything with trick or treat. Oh, right. But, the, but the, the point is that the or the the, uh, the motion was to assign an allotted time frame for trick or treating. So I'm asking, wouldn't it make sense to have a time limitation on going door to door to solicit sales, or can they just go at any time, eight, nine, twelve o'clock at night? It's nothing, no limitation. I didn't know Girl Scouts went door to door. I thought they were stationed at a store. <laughs> No, they come door to door. Usually it's the parent that's doing the selling, though, but, you know, so it, it's not a big deal. I want to make a big deal out of it, but I just wanted to beg the question if we're going to be consistent in limiting when people can do stuff, then maybe we ought to be consistent. Uh, motion to pass. Motion to approve. Okay. Uh, there's, a, there's a second. And there's a person, a second on the floor. Your audio, Mayor. On the floor. Uh, roll call, please. Oh, your feedback. Yeah, that's me. We're trying to. Alderman Turner. Aye. Alderman Rivera. Aye. 
Alderman Florian. Aye. Alderman Taylor. Aye. Alderman Bolton. Aye. Alderman Seeger. Aye. Alderman Mosio. Aye. Alderman Kirkwood. Aye. Alderman Newsom. Aye. Motion passed, sir. Passing, Terry. We're getting a little feedback, everybody. We're Ooh. trying to address that right now. Uh, item E, uh, motion by Alderman Rivera, second by Alderman, Mo uh, Alderman Florian, motion to retro uh, retroactively authorize the city of Waukegan, the city official to execute a contract with Ramon and Son, Sewer and Water Inc. in amount not to exceed $26,100 for the purpose of emergency repair for the property located at 824 North County Street and to waive the competitive bidding process pursuant to city Waukegan Code of Ordinance Exemption Bonafide Emergency Waiver 2-458, parentheses I, parentheses 2. Alderman Rivera. Yeah, um, I'm sorry. I had pulled out F. I, I, I did not pull out E. I think uh, Alderman yeah. Turner pulled out. Yeah, I'll, I'll I'm, speak sorry. To I'm sorry. I apologize. Alderman Turner. Yeah, thank you, sir. So I'm just, um, I have an observation here in that, you know, I, uh, before the agenda was taken down, which I, I don't understand why it was taken down after the meeting started. So people coming in now can't read it on board docs. Uh, but I was able to get the attachment for this motion. And it says right in the motion that it's a retroactive authorization to pay, right? So we've already done the work. We assigned the contract. It never got city council approval until now. And it was supposedly an emergency. But here's the curious thing. I'm looking at the memo that was attached uh, to the agenda. And that memo was dated March 2nd of 2020. But then it states that on June 18th, the housing rehabilitation program received proposals. So it was an emergency that occurred in June when the proposals were solicited and, and received, but the memo to the mayor was uh, way back in March. And I did kind of listen a little, I caught a little bit of the discussion during the uh, finance meeting. And I think it was stated that this matter arose pre-COVID, which was at the uh, mid-March, I think. Uh, the work was done in June. Uh, the bill was received in August. And now we're here in September asking for the council to approve it. So that's like a six month swing between when the emergency, as I read it, as I understand, when the emergency occurred, bids were received, work was done, work was billed, and now we're coming for approval to pay. And it, it, I, I don't get it. And we've, we've kind of had these conversations previously about retroactively paying uh, bills or bills being paid and then we're retroactively approving it. The purpose and the point of getting council approval for expenditures in excess of $25,000 is so that we can approve. We can see what's going on and we have a fiduciary, fiduciary responsibility to our constituents and we need to be looking at these dollars that are being spent I, I can't. I cannot, in good conscience, uh, vote for a uh, retroactive spend in excess of twenty five dollars. Twenty five thousand dollars. We have six months to bring it before the council. Thank well, you. if I if I might say, uh, during the finance committee, this issue came up in March. No one could get in because we were on shutdown with the COVID. Mm -hmm. So then when they did get in in June to do this work, it came up over the $25,000 limit. So it was stated that they didn't get it in time um, to get it to the council for approval, but it was a bona fide emergency. And so they submitted the bill in August for payment. So usually, and as the mayor stated in the finance committee, previously, before you all came on the council, CDBG funds were already approved prior. Mm -hmm. So when we came up with this $25,000 limit, now anything over $25,000 has to come 
to the city council for approval, even right. though the funds are already there for right. CDBG uh, to be paid, it still has to come to the council because it went over $25,000. So right. anybody else wants to speak to that? I understand that uh, during that time, um, during COVID, people were kind of like, I, I know that it was an emergency. If my sewer was blocked or whatever, I wouldn't really wouldn't care about COVID. I want somebody to get in there and, and take care of it. If I don't have, you know, I can't use my toilet or whatever situation was going on with sewer, but um, the work couldn't be done. And then they did get three approvals or, or three bids. And this one did come in as the lowest. So, and then uh, Larissa did state that they just didn't get it turned in. Uh, when it should, and the mayor is going to put some things in place so that this doesn't happen again. That it'll probably go directly to the finance before going to the different departments. Thank you. I Thank just you. want Thank to. You. Sorry, I just want to echo oh, that man. because certainly we address that in the finance committee, uh, and Miss Garland understands that we want to make sure that those things are taken care of in a timely fashion, but certainly she did address that concern. And it was just over $25,000 because once again, if it hadn't been at the $25,000 mark, it wouldn't come before us. So we are certainly aware as the finance committee and certainly the mayor spoke to that during the finance committee. So those of us that were there in on the finance committee is aware of that situation. Thank you, Alderman. Roll call, please. Wait, wait, wait. Wait, wait, we have one more. Alderman Taylor. Um, I understand what um, Alderman Turner is saying that we've had three expenditures over the last three meetings that required authorization um, from the Alderman where the spending proceeded um, their authorization, meaning that it was found by the finance department and then it came to the Alderman for approval. Um, in this finance committee, the mayor explained that approving the budget was kind of with CBGD was a blanket authorization. And the finance director corrected that and said that even through the, the budget, even though the budget was approved, expenditures of $25,000 still need to, re, to be done by the alderman. And if you look at section 2.452B of the city ordinances, it states that in all cases where such contracts involve the expenditure of a sum over 25,000 and in excess, the city council has to approve it. So mm -hmm. we've had these things happen and this is the third meeting that it's happened. And we need to get this under control because this is not looking good to our residents that why are we on having these issues when anything over $25,000 is supposed to come to council and we're approving things retroactive. So there has to be some major changes that I would like to see. Alderman, Alderman, can I, can I hold off a second? If you want us to stop doing emergencies, we will effective immediately in order for these no. things to happen. Yes, it sounds like that is, ma'am. This was an emergency. This emergency. was a legitimate emergency. And we will continue to do emergencies as we mm -hmm. as they come in, into us. It is. It has never been and will never be as far as I'm concerned and I'm the leader of this community to bring up issues late. We, we identified them, brought them to your attention for this. I get what you're saying. I understand that. Yeah. And let's be clear, the work needed to be done and it was done. So and from this, I'm, okay. I, I, I get that ma'am. So thank Better you, Alderman Better Kirkwood. Better. I'm sorry, Alderman Rivera. Yeah, um, Mayor, respectfully, I think the issue is not that the work had to be done or it was an emergency. Yes, sir. Um, there, was, uh, there was plenty of time in June, uh, right. from June forward, to bring it to the council. So we'll so the point that, I'll, I'll take a look and see exactly what those time frames are to bring them to you so we, can, so we can bring this one to rest. We talked about it in finance. I'll get to you, Alderman Tate and Alderman Turner, exactly the timelines, and then we can talk offline as to exactly what happened with this particular issue. And we have procedures in place. I'm gonna get those emailed to you tomorrow, so we'll have them. And let's see if we can do maybe up to 100% compliance with those procedures. Thank you very much, Alderman. Thank you. 
Roll call, please. We could have had an emergency council meeting to approve it, right? Uh, roll call, please. Alderman Turner. No. Alderman Rivera. Aye. Alderman Florian. Aye. Alderman Taylor. Aye. Only because it's an emergency. Thank you, Alderman. Al Alderman Bolton. Aye. Alderman Seeger. Aye. Alderman Mosio. Aye. Alderman Kirkwood. Aye. Alderman Newsom. Aye. Yeah. All right, thank you. Uh, and as we all know, uh, during March through now, we have been a COVID-19 administration. Your staff has been busting their butts trying to get things done for our residents to make sure. So I, I, I hear you, I understand you, but we are operating and managing as all of us are to some of the most difficult crisis in American history. So thank you very much for being understanding and I do appreciate you bringing your concerns to not only my attention, but to staff. But we have a, another motion on the floor by Alderman Rivera, second by Alderman Turner. Motion authorized the retention of Peter Johnson Murray LLC to be added to the panel for outside defense counsel. There's a, there's a question by Alderman Rivera. Alderman Rivera. Um, yeah, I just uh, I, I would just like to highlight that, um, you know, we we tried to uh, put in an ordinance uh, so we can increase the fees that are charged uh, through the gaming terminals. And um, what it's going to turn out to be is going to be uh, an expenditure. And according to uh, what we heard in the finance committee, we're not going to be, you know, through this litigation for at least a year, year and a half, uh, could even be two. Um, so the reason I pulled this out was, uh, again, I'm a no vote on this, but I just wanted to make sure that, you know, it was understood. Uh, this is something that's going to cost us money, and it should have been something that uh, generated revenues for the city. Um, thank you. Alderman Rivera, I, I respectfully say that as you move forward in your career as a public servant, particularly as an alderman of the city of Waukegan, there are going to be issues that come up that we say and don't say that, that will cost us legal cost the taxpayers dollars because those are those are steps that we have to take in order to protect the city. I'll give you case point. Here is uh, when we voted for the casino, the proposals, what happened? They went down. Who sued us? Uh, the opposing person who did not. It's going to cost us money. Unfortunately, these things do happen in the business that we're in of running our city government. I, I don't I, I don't want them to but they do. But Alderman when we, Rivera, do we go to Alderman Florian? Yeah. Um, but, but, but the point that I'm trying to make is that previous to the, you know, we had discussions about this when we were voting on this ordinance and we knew that there was litigation going on um, okay. and, and it was being fought and, and we had another Avenue and I'm just, again, highlighting the fact that, you know, the decision that we made back then is going to cost us money. Now. So there's going to, a lot of decisions are going to be made that we might cost us, uh, up front, hopefully they'll benefit while Keegan. We got Alderman Florian and Alderman Turner, correct? Alderman Turner, Alderman Florian. Um, I'd like to know how much of the push tax we've collected so far. Have we collected well, anything? At this time, ma'am, we haven't collected anything. Okay. So we're hiring an attorney for a fee we haven't collected yet. Yes, ma'am. Mr. Long pointed out in the finance committee meeting that we could drop the idea of this push tax and save ourselves the litigation that no I, I don't I think you misunderstood he said that the dollars that we could the dollars I think there was another question that came in as to if we drop this what could we uh, what would be the benefit from it well the, no litigation the, yeah well uh, Alderman, I understand that but what if we win? You are on deck. Okay. Uh oh. Somebody needs to mute themselves for being off deck. Okay. But I mean, hey, the argument is there. We're here where we are right now, uh, Alderman. So I, I do appreciate you, Alderman Turner. You're muted, Alderman Turner. You're the Thank tech you, guy. Man. You shouldn't be yeah. muted. Yeah. I, I do these things all day long, you know, so I make my living. Listen, uh, here's my observation. This is the first that I've heard of any lawsuit, right? And and the first I hear of a lawsuit is a motion to spend money 
to bring in additional counsel to defend against that lawsuit. That's the first problem I have, but it happens, okay? The next thing is, and, and it's not reflected here in the agenda, but from I looked at the, the attached documentation earlier today, and there's $195 an hour bill rate, but there is no uh, maximum and no end date. It's an open-ended contract, no dates associated with it from this date to that date, no uh, maximum amount to be paid. They could run this thing out 5, 10, 20, 50 years the way it's written, and we have no recourse. So if we're going to uh, issue a contract for legal services, I think we need to define some parameters around what that contract, with some specific specifications and the parameters of what that contract is. Yeah, okay, so we say, hey, yeah, we're gonna call some money, but we don't even know how much money. All we know is whatever he bills us is gonna be hourly at 195. How many people, 40, 60, 80, everybody in the firm? We have no details here for this uh, line item. Okay, thank you, Alderman Turner. Alderman Mosier. As I said in the um, committee meeting, uh, we knew, I knew this was coming. Oak Lawn knew it was coming. Now, we can repeal the push tax, but I'd like to know which alderman is going to go to all the businesses who have not been open for the last six months, and I want you to go there, and I want you to tell them that you're going to raise their terminal fee, not the person that's making money hand over fist as a terminal operator, but go to the tavern owners in Waukegan and say, you know what, we're short on money and we're going to raise your fee from $1,000 up to $3,000. Why would we do that? They have, well, we need more money. We need revenue. We could, this is a revenue from a terminal operator who's making billions, billions of money. It's a penny of push tax. We, we don't have to do it. That's fine. We can get rid yeah. of it. That, I'm all for that. Let's get rid of it. But then when it comes time to pay our employees and pay our bills, how do we do it? If somebody can think of an alternative funding that's going to generate, hopefully, the projections were, let's just be conservative, let's say $2 million, somebody come up with an alternative for $2 million where we don't have to do a thing. There's no overhead in this, not a bit. But if this council wants to do that, then I want to know who's going to go to the business owners and tell them we're going to raise their terminal fee. And when it comes time to lay off employees... I want to know who's going to vote yes to lay off employees because we don't have enough money. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, we have Autumn Rivera, then a motion that we'll get a Autumn Rivera, then Autumn Flora, and then we'll call for the question. Autumn Rivera. Yeah, I just wanted to make a statement uh, to uh, Alderman Mosio's uh, uh, comment regarding the alternative. Uh, we did discuss alternatives at length when we originally had this uh, ordinance come up. Um, we, we still do have alternatives. Um, as Alderman Florian indicated, a lot of these terminal operators pay the fees um, as part of a, a, a deal that they have with these uh, businesses. Um, so, I mean, there's, there's, there's a lot of variables here, um, but I don't think, uh, uh, um, you know, using negative scare tactics is, uh, is a way of uh, trying to negotiate where we should be at with this. Thank you, um, thank Alderman, you. Alderman Florian. Um, well, I just wanted to point out, um, I, I know Alderman Moisio was on a roll there, but when he said there's no overhead associated with this, I would argue that hiring these attorneys is considered part of the cost of putting this push tax into fruition here. Yeah, it's but we don't know what that cost is, man. Well, it's right, but I'm just saying it's considered overhead. <laughs> Thank you, ma'am. Alderman Taylor, then we're going to call for the question. Madam Clerk, get ready to call for the question. Alderman Taylor. Um, did we um, go out for bid with other attorneys on this, or was this just selected as this is the group that's representing others, and how was this negotiated, and was the rate negotiated? Uh, ma'am, uh, the, the, yeah. yes, we did. All right, we're going to go Alderman Mozio, but I want to answer that question. Answer the question is yes, ma'am, we did. Other attorneys came back much, much higher. Much, much higher. Three, actually, it was two times higher. So we, 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 we did our due diligence, ma'am. But thank you very much for asking. Alderman Mozio? I was just going to say, Bob explained in the committee meeting yeah. that this is also the firm that Oak Lawn has retained. So they're already up to speed with it. They're already done all the homework. So that's obviously that would cut down the, the, the cost. They're not going to put as many hours into it. 
They've all, they're already up to speed with it because Oakland is Oakland was the first, and they knew they were going to get sued too. But the benefits of it are, are enormous. Enormous. I, I, one more, one more comment, Your Honor, enormous. and then I'll shut up. <laughs> the people of Waukegan have told me to a person, people that wanted gambling, didn't want gambling, are adamant. They have told me if you're going to have gambling, get the best deal you can for Waukegan. Get the most money from the gaming gambling operators, not local businesses. This accomplishes that. Yes, it does. If we're going to have to have it, I mean, just recently, what did Mayor Lightfoot say? She wants this casino built yesterday in Chicago. Why? Because every municipality is hemorrhaging money, hemorrhaging money after this COVID. Every business is hemorrhaging money. If we don't get revenue streams, how are we going to pay our people? I'm all ears. Thank you. Thank you. Roll call, please. Alderman Turner. No. Alderman Rivera. No. Alderman Florian. No. Alderman Taylor. No. Alderman Bolton. Aye. Alderman Seeger. Aye. Alderman Mosio. Aye. Alderman Kirkwood. Aye. Alderman Newsom. Aye. That's five to four. Motion passed and carried. Uh, item B, uh, motion by uh, Alderman Mosio, second by Alderman, uh, Alderman Kirkwood to approve the ordinance modernizing the city council rules and clarifying the rules of public comment. Any questions to the motion? I think you skipped one. No, wait a minute. Skipped yeah, one. We, we missed one. 4M. Who? Oh, ooh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I, I apologize. I apologize. Uh, okay, uh, most of Alderman Turner, second by Alderman Seeger, uh, to approve all raffle sales applications. Alderman Turner, you had a question or? or uh, yes, sir. So again, here's one where we're approving retroactively, right? This raffle was for, uh, I think it was for your golf outing. It was, sir. Uh, let me, let me then, explain, everybody. Wait, wait, Can I explain, finish, Alderman Turner? I'd like to finish speaking, if I may. Sure. So the, the event was held, the raffle was held, and uh -huh. now we're coming back after the fact and saying let's approve permission to have the raffle again this speaks to you know a lack of following our own processes and legality these are ordinances these are laws state law when you do a campaign event a campaign raffle you get permission from the state to do it then you have to get permission from the city so we've foregone that and we're coming back on the back end as if it's nothing and it's not nothing it's it's it, and you know, we, we've got to do better, Sam. We've got to do better. Alderman, Alderman, Alderman let, me, let, me, let me clear something up for you real quick. Every year, there's an annual application that comes through, annual, that I do. Annually, I do. This is that annual application. That's what it falls in, sir. It has nothing to do with this specific event. It's an annual application that covers me for the entire year, which is within the ordinance. So... So I apologize if you think that I've done this to try I mean, to not, avert. I, not, let me finish. To I'm let, anything. What I'm saying is there's a process. There's an ordinance in place for a reason. Okay, if we Alderman. can't even follow our own ordinances and our own procedures, how can we expect the citizenry do, to do the same? Right? I agree, to Alderman. You're absolutely right, Alderman. Alderman mind, you're right. We'll, we'll Alderman. get approval later. We don't have to approve now. We don't have to do that. No, we do. We have to follow procedures. We have to follow our own ordinances. We just approved three appointments to various committees and commissions, but you have not re uh, uh, reassigned or, or uh, 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 for our committee uh, chairmanships and committee memberships. But that was due back in May. So you, you're just forgetting about what you're supposed to do and doing what you want to do. And that's wrong. Sam, we've got to do better, man. And, and you're Alderman Turner, I, I would love to speak with you. You're resistant to even hearing the, 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 a suggestion or, or heaven forbid a criticism. But this is wrong. So tonight's meeting, we have two separate line items where you've gone back and, and, and asked for a council approval after the fact. Yes, sir. That's wrong, sir. Thank you. Yes, sir. And I Thank you, Alderman Turner. I didn't need it, but sometimes no, I, no, sir. you know no, how sir. I get passionate and that's... No problem, area. sir. 
no problem. All the return is no read for you to apologize or anything. If you feel that that situation was wrong, it was wrong. I accept full responsibility of that, sir. I can assure you in the near future, we will be catching those. Uh, and I'll, I'll find out exactly why that was not. Thank you, Your Honor. Well, uh, I'm, just being, I'm just being told. Oh, I'm just being told. If we take a look at the application, sir, the application date came in. Unfortunately, the date in which the event held would have been before council meeting. So that was one of the reasons, but that, I understand. I get what you're saying, sir. Uh, I, it would have been great for you to have spoken to me about that offline, but I understand you're doing a fiduciary responsibility as an alderman to bring this to not only to my attention, but to the rest of your colleagues. Uh, we will certainly try to keep, uh, be mindful of that as we move forward, sir, to make sure that all of our ordinance are adhered to by myself and others as it represents the city of Waukegan. Thank you, Alderman Thank Turner. You. Roll call, please. Thank you, Alderman Mayor. Alderman Turner. No. Alderman Rivera. Yes. Alderman Florian. Yes. Alderman Taylor. Yes. Alderman Bolton. Yes. Aye. Alderman Seeger. Aye. Alderman Mosio. Aye. Alderman Kirkwood. Aye. Alderman Newsom. Aye. Motion passed. Motion passed and carried. Uh, motion by uh, Alderman Turner, second by Alderman uh, Bolton, authorized the mayor to approve the fee amendment to the city administrative, administrative adjudication officer, raising an hourly rate from 125 per hour to 175 per hour to meet the market rate. This matter was uh, held in the finance committee. Uh, there was a hold of by Alderman Taylor. Yeah. Alderman Taylor. <laughs> Um, for holding this over at the time. I thought that we were going to get more information on what was the cost effectiveness of this. But since we didn't, my concern here is this is about a 40% increase in one year. And at a time when our budgets are so tight, I'm struggling with being able to justify such a large increase. Okay, thank you, ma'am. Next. Roll call, please. Alderman Turner. You're muted. You're muted, Alderman Turner. Thank you. I do not want to make the motion and uh, my vote is no. Okay. The motion by Alderman Newsom then and seconded by Alderman, uh, I think it was a Bolton, do we have as a second or? Okay. Alderman Seeger. Uh, Alderman uh, Turner's vote is no. Alderman Rivera. Um, I agree with the previous statement. I don't think financially we're in a position uh, to be spending uh, additional funds, so my vote is no. Alderman Florian. Same, no. Alderman Taylor. No. Alderman Bolton. Aye. Alderman Seeger. Aye. Alderman Mosio. Aye. Alderman Kirkwood. Aye. Alderman Newsom. Aye. Uh, motion passed and carried. Uh, item B, uh, motion by Alderman uh, Mozio, second by Alderman Rivera. No, 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 not me. Okay, Alderman Seeger uh, to approve orders modernizing city council rules and clarifying rules of public comment. Any questions to the motion? Alderman Taylor and Alderman Florian, Alderman Taylor. I have a big problem at this point in time, changing audience time. I, I understand some of the things that, you know, maybe when you have a large group or whatever, but presently we're not even meeting in person. And I know residents are extremely mm -hmm. agitated by this, that they don't feel that they're being heard or listened to. I understand the difficulty at this time, but to, change audience time, which is the only place that residents have to speak. Last time I checked, we worked for the people. And as an alderman, I want residents to come to me and talk about things. And when I'm there at city council or here on Zoom, it is my job to hear from residents. I don't want to shorten their time. I don't want to dismiss their concerns. So I feel like at this time, we're kind of being tone deaf to the community. So I am not willing to do it at this time. 
Alderman Taylor, I want to be clear. We're not getting rid of the three minutes. That was not what we're doing. We but eliminated the 45 minutes. We're, we're saying in the event that there is a large group so that large groups can, can clearly be heard, we would just, and that's discretion of us up here with wow. from a three to two to give everybody an opportunity to speak. So we're not eliminating. So maybe there was confusion. The 45 no. minutes was out. So we're not eliminating the three minute rule, ma'am. But what we're also doing is we're making them having to sign up 15 minutes before, which technically, as you know, we've allowed people to come up and sign up at the last minute. But man, we've always done that. That's always been out there for that process. But that according to what we're doing, we're- We're changing we're, that. Yeah. No, but oh. I, I, I mean, oh. that has always been our, okay. okay. If I understand you, Alderman Florian. I agree with um, what Alderman Taylor just said. And I'm also concerned um, about the fact where it talks about changing yeah from three minutes to two minutes at yes, the mayor's discretion. And at it's- the chair, at not, not, the, the, not the mayor, but the chair. I don't mean to interrupt, but the, whomever's chairing uh, our meetings, but go ahead. Well, that's always pretty much the mayor. It says right in here, the mayor. So I'm just reading what you have written down. And it um, it concerns me because it just says a lot. So what, what does that mean? Some What's days that number? might mean 10, that might mean 50. I mean, that's not very clear. And we have been, I believe in the past, you know, we've talked about lawsuits a couple times tonight. Haven't we been sued in the past over audience time? Or shouldn't we be doing everything we can to avoid having more lawsuits over something that we're supposed to be doing to allow the public to to vent to us, to get information to us? It's so frustrating to me that we aren't meeting in person. We haven't been meeting in person. Other communities are back in their city council chambers. I don't understand why we can't be back in city council, um, in city hall. Um, and I just, I, I just don't think it, this, this is the time to do something like this, especially when we're not meeting in person. The, the, the citizens don't even have a chance to comment on this. Okay, we're gonna go with, we're gonna let Bob Long speak and go to Alderman Rivera. And Alderman Turner, did you have your hand up as well? Yes, sir. Okay, so Bob, then we have Alderman Rivera and Alderman Turner and we roll call. All, uh, Bob you, Long. Thank you, Mayor. You know, there seems to be some confusion. Following la following the meeting last we had last, when we heard your comments, we made some structural changes to this ordinance to try to match up with some of those uh, concerns you've got. One of which was to eliminate the cap on audience time. That that isn't there. That's been removed. So your concern was addressed. Alderman Rivera. Um. Yeah. Thank you. Um. The the the. <clears throat> excuse me. The indication here is that uh, it's to update city council rules to meet guidelines, modernizing and clarifying the city council rules related to public comment. Um, which I understand and I don't agree. Um, and, and I understand that, uh, uh, what is it, uh, w when you're running for office, you're, you're, you're out there, you know, um, everything for the citizen. Then when you get into office, it's just like, you know, what's going to make our job easier? Although this does make our job easier, um, it takes away uh, from the audience. So, um, you know, to me, that seems like a negative whenever you're taking something away. Um, and the second comment that I have is that, it, you know, the title to this ordinance doesn't address um, the, the passage of ordinance revising the requirement of a single majority of aldermen present um, or the requirement of two thirds of all elected aldermen and supermajority to override. I mean, you know, the headline says, you know, we're talking about public comments, but then there's two other items that, you know, don't deal with public comments that are added in here, which I believe um, would uh, it, it would uh, diminish the authority of the council? Um, no, no. So, Alderman, uh, we took that out. Alderman, that's not in there. I'm, I'm looking at it no, right now. Thirds, no, no, for the for the override, that's that was taken out. But it still, it but still shows up on the agenda. It still comes up on the agenda. No, Bob, that, that was taken out, right, Bob? Yes. If I don't, maybe the agenda. I think what happened is that the agenda item was carried over from the original meeting without change. 
How that happened, I don't know. It just happened. The ordinance itself, if you look at the five page document, you'll see that there have been structural changes to it. Yeah, I, 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 I guess that's where the confusion is coming in. But, but you're still allowing that things would, an ordinance would pass with a simple majority. So I go back to, I remember the incident with the tax levy last year where we had an alderman missing and there was this whole bruja. I think we could get down to where we had enough aldermen missing that I would not want to take a vote and it just be the simple majority. There needs to be like a five majority, you know what I mean? That kind of thing. This just says a simple majority. So what happens if you only had three ald or five aldermen there and it could pass with a three vote? It, it, it's very vague in the way that that's written. Maybe we just need to hold this over for one more session and make sure that it gets revamped correctly. And well, man, we, we, we've done, we, we have, at least uh, we've tried to make the necessary changes that Alderman Turner, Alderman Rivera, Alderman Florian had Myself. specifically said, we want no 45 minutes, no limit, took that out. Alderman Rivera said what? I want to get rid of the uh, holdover, took that out. And then we made it to, we thought would be appealing for all residents to have equal time to speak in front of us if and when we start uh, meeting in person. So I, I guess I'll, I, I don't understand where the confusion is at. We've done the, we've done what you've asked us. There's no vagueness to it. it it's, it's, we're operating like normal, uh, cities throughout this country, certainly within within the county of Lake. Why are we removing? Why are we remove uh, removing what, sir? The uh, supermajority. We're, We're taking to a supermajority. Super We're supermajority yes. down to a simple majority. Why are we doing that? What's the rationale? We, there is no rationale. That particular rule was put in place back in the 1980s when we had 18 aldermen. Okay. All right. We are dealing with nine aldermen. A simple majority, five to four, six to three, just a simple majority. There is all government agencies deal with simple majorities, no. unless there's something specific that, that it relates to. That's what, all, Alderman. There's no hidden agenda behind it. We have Alderman Rivera. What's the need to, to make these changes now? Yeah. Well, sir, I mean, yeah, Bob can answer that legally. Bob can answer right. that. Well, let's go to Alderman Mosio, then Bob is giving your legal opinion on it. I've been on here 17 years, and most things have been by simple majority. A few things are by super majority. Yeah. Again, it has been. Do you yeah. want everybody to sue us for everything that we've voted on since since we had 18 aldermen? Yeah. Or 60, did, you want to be in court for that? Yeah, we haven't been in court for that yet. They could. What are you talking about? No. It's an old ordinance that said super majority. If Bob can correct me if I'm not right. Why we, we changed it last year or the year before? You've been here 17 years, Greg. Why you haven't you changed it before? I, Keith, Keith, I'm not like you. I don't know every ordinance by heart. I don't know. I don't know every ordinance by heart because somebody caught it and sued us. That's why. Bob Long. And and the fundamental, the fundamental problem, the reason you need something like this, it has to look something like this in some way, shape, or form. The problem you had with the, you know, with the levy last year almost it could have conceivably resulted. Now, it, there, there were problems in how the lawsuit was brought, but we've tried to address two of those issues. One was about the absentee that, uh, the, or the uh, voting on abstention. And what happens if you pass or abstain? And at the on the other half of the balance, I get it. To restore the major simple majority, which is in use in all other municipalities in the uh -huh. state of Illinois. The reason for that being, when you have absences and you can't count all the votes, you can end up in those one or two different positions during the course of a year when you have to take action by a given point in time. In that particular instance, you have to adopt a levy by the end of the calendar year. It's got to be done. There's a right. big date. You have to do it. And you didn't have enough people to make it pass. So where are you in that instance? You just not levy? 
what happens then? Then you don't get then you don't get any money at all from the taxes. And in order to get a new levy, you have to adopt a uh, and have the citizens adopt a referendum that gives you right. the taxing power back. Renew it. That going to happen in the modern world? That's a heck of a risk. That's millions of dollars you won't have to put into police and fire and all the rest of the stuff. That's the reason why we put, why we suggested that this modernization, which it, re it really is a modernization because it matches all of the other municipalities throughout the state of Illinois. That's how they do it. That's why they do it. Oh, Alderman, I gotta... Florian, did we go, uh, Alderman Florian, Alderman Bolton. Alderman Florian? Um, I have a question, Bob. The other um, communities you mentioned that you're comparing us to, do they have... Um, city managers or are they like our city with a strong mayor? All cities in Illinois. This is a unicorn. It's the only one I know of anywhere. <laughs> Look, I'm serious. Yeah. I mean, that's, it, it, that's oh. it. I've never seen this any place else. They don't have it in Chicago. They don't have it in Evanston. They don't have it in Oak Park, Aurora, Naperville, St. Charles, Alton. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And, and do those do those cities have four or five aldermen that were supported in their campaigns by one individual on the, the city council? Like aldermen, do? stop. Alderman, Florida, what does that have to do with the question at hand? That has nothing to do with the question at hand, ma'am. Thank you, Alderman Bolton. Alderman Bolton. So it's a clarification. I'm understanding the limit is three minutes, and there is no cap. Right. Okay, so that will validate the issue at hand, right? Okay. Mm -hmm. If you have a whole lot of people, it could be turned down to two minutes a piece with the consent of the alderman. Alderman Rivera, I'm sorry, Alderman, uh, Alderman Rivera, did you have your hand up, sir? No, no, sir. Okay, so it's Alderman Turner, then Alderman Taylor. Alderman Turner. All right, so here, here's what I, what I heard, right? Uh, this year, we... We had a motion to approve a, a tax levy. I abstained from that, and it, it was counted as a yes. Now, I didn't like it, but that's the way it was explained after the fact, okay? So now we've corrected that, or we're going to correct that, that, that abstention, abstentions do not count as a, of any vote at, any, at all. But I have gone on record and committed that I will not vote for a new tax levy next year, right? So I, here's what I think. I think this is an end run trying to set it up so that you'll have enough votes to pass any tax levy. That shit ain't right and I don't like it. That's what I think is happening. So no, and I think we need to hold this over for discussion. I wanna meet with you, Mayor, one-on-one, -on -one, face to face, no phone calls. You and I need to talk about this because it's wrong and it ain't I'll right. Tell you, I'll I'll turn turn say, wait a minute, hold on, I'm not finished yet, sir. Excuse me, Alderman Tarn. Please address me as uh, please address me, sir, respectfully as I do you. I was trying to make a point to you. I will. I will yield so you can then make your Thank point. You. Thank you, sir. Thank, Thank you very much, Mayor. Here's the thing: as Alderman Rivera stated, you know, we go around and we ask people to vote for us and put us in the office, and we're going to represent them, right? And I represent my constituents. But then we get up here and we take the position that now we're going to represent government down to our constituents. That's not the way I do. I represent my neighbors, the people who put me in office and those who reside in my ward, everyone. And I represent their best interests as best I interpret their interests. And in their interests, my neighbors tell me constantly they cannot afford another tax increase. And, and I'm not going to vote for one. I'm telling you now. So by taking away this requirement for a super majority, going to a simple majority, then you don't care whether how I vote. It negates my voter, my my no vote. And that's wrong. You're saying, and not only is this for now, but this is forever. It'll always be that for every administration going forward. It'll never change. So we, the council, have to have some power, some authority some constraints to represent our people. And I'd like to hold this matter over, sir. Thank you. Alderman Turner, Alderman Taylor. Um, one of the questions I have is, why are we doing this um, random 
like they sign up in an order and then we randomly pick. Um, why is it so important to have that? That, it that, came, that came about because because there was a complaint with the public access counselor. Somebody came in and signed up out of order and put his name down at the bottom of the list, and then got all then got all upset because the because his he wasn't the last one to speak. Now the PAC said it doesn't matter. You got your chance to speak and the rest of it. This just simply brings our ordinance in line with the rulings from the public access counselor. Okay, as opposed to holding people on. game the system, they come in, they sign at the top, they sign at the bottom, and that way they they think that has more theatrical. Um, Your Honor, yes, sir. Yeah, Alderman Mosia. I'm gonna I'm gonna try my hardest here. I mean, let's. I'm asking you. I'll, I'll ask you to hold us. So I'm gonna try to build some trust with with the rest of my aldermen. Seeing as I'm the old, only alderman on this council that had audience time at my house at 11.30 <laughs> at night. So I'm going to try to build some trust with the rest of my aldermen. I don't know how successful I'll be. Mm -hmm. I had alderman's time at my house at 11.30 to 1. That's never happened before. So I'm going to try to build some trust because right now this council is off the rails. We can't even agree on a raffle which is a silly state statute from the word go. I agree. You got the W, you, you got the W cover, the baseball team that wants to have a raffle and they got to trounce their ass down the city hall, fill out a bunch of papers. It's over governance. So honor, will you please, your honor, will you please hold this over? I'm going to try to build some consensus on this council, try to build some trust. I don't know how far I'll get, but I'm going to try. Thank you. Uh, the matter has been held over by Alderman Mozio. Uh, I, I want to state for the record to Alderman Turner. Alderman Turner, it sounds like you made a suggestion that uh, that I myself is trying to do end run around the city council. Uh, if that is what you're saying, sir, I resent that. I truly do. As a former alderman, 18 years, representing one of the toughest wards in the city of Waukee, in one of the wards who systemically has been neglected to make an accusation to, to me because I am trying to just right some of the wrongs that exist in some of our governments on how we govern. Uh, I, I, I take offense to it, sir, but you have your right to say what you wanna say. Uh, meeting with you as I had in the past and any other alderman, I will do that face to face, but I'm a man of this. When you give you a word on something, alderman, that's for all of us. That's all we have is our word. With that being said, uh, we're going to move on to uh, uh, old biz new business. There being none ordinances. There being none closing items. Uh, item 10, 10 a alderman's time. Madam Clerk. Alderman, Alderman Turner. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Uh, so in the sixth war, we're making a lot of progress on our neighborhood cleanliness again, but I, I want to ask uh, our neighbors to be cognizant of the trash cans. We've talked about this before. You leave your trash cans out, they're overflowing and trash flows in the street. Uh, Mayor and Bob Long, I'm not certain if there is an ordinance regards trash cans being having to be put uh, on the side or at the rear of the home, but if not, I'd like to look at it something of that nature we have not a lot but some people uh who leave their trash cans at the curb right they never take them in so i like to uh be able to address that but overall i think uh we're doing a great job here in the city our public works department is uh very diligent in in uh accomplishing their task uh police are uh responding being extremely responsive uh, one major concern that I hear a lot of comments about is the number of shots fired calls across the city. And uh, I've spoken with the chief of police. I understand that there is some uh, program that he's working on a potential solution. So I'll leave that for him to discuss at a later date. But I want to thank you all for your time. And Mayor, I assure you I'm not attacking you personally, but I do have concerns and this is the place to raise them. So thank you all very much and have a good night. Alderman Rivera. Uh, thank you, Madam Clerk. Um, 
I want to um, uh, just uh, echo what the mayor had said earlier regarding COVID-19. Please continue to be mindful uh, when you're out and remember that wearing a mask is only a sign of respect. Um, I also wanted to um, echo what uh, Alderman Keith Turner just said. This is a, a forum where uh, we should agree that we are going to disagree. And, uh, and it is, it is a, a healthy conversation that we have when we work out and work through our concerns. Um, thank you very much. Alderman Florian. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Um, first of all, I wanted to thank the mayor, the fire department and the police department for arranging to help celebrate my uncle's 90th birthday a couple weeks ago. Um, he was thrilled to have his little birthday parade and it was, it made me cry to see him so happy. Um, we got a couple of guys to come from the Misfits Car Club with some old cars and it was really a great event and, and I got profuse thanks from the family and everybody involved. So I just wanted to um, thank the mayor for helping me put that together for him. Um, when we were discussing the um, changes in the um, city minute, you know, the audience time and so on, and the voting um, uh, last meeting, I mentioned that I had read in the IML booklet um, that you could attend the meeting electronically. And th this is from the IML booklet. I'll read this. Um, it says electronic attendance. You can only attend public meetings electronically if um, your public body has adopted rules for such attendance, your other board and council members approve your request, a quorum is physically present, and you are unable to attend because of illness or disability. So I think we should consider possibly um, making such rules so that if one of us is unable to attend due to illness, because we have had that from a couple of aldermen just in the, the year or so I've been on council, so that we can, we, we know we can do this electronically now, we've been doing it for months. So if we could make it possible to pass a rule, we wouldn't have the issue of having an alderman missing for extended periods of time and missing out on, on votes possibly. So I think that's something we should consider doing going forward now that we know we can make this happen. Um, I also wanted to address what Alderman Moisio referred to as the audience time that took place at his house. Um, I want everyone to know that him and I are working together to try to have a sit down with the people that were at his house. We want to listen to them and understand where they're coming from and, and open up a dialogue. So we're working very hard to make that happen. And uh, I hope we can put something together relatively soon and um, get more conversation going between them and the city council. I just wanna close with a quote from Desmond Tutu. And this has to do with what we've been talking about and, and what's going on in the city and, and the, the, the place we find ourselves. And it says, he, Desmond Tutu said, there comes a time where we have to stop just pulling people out of the river we have to go upstream and find out why they're falling in the river in the first place. Thank you. Alderman Taylor. I wanna remind everyone that the 2020 census is crucial to complete, especially now when our city is not going to be bringing in the money that we have in the past. Please take the opportunity to fill out that census. Um, obviously, you know, some parts of the city are doing better than others and filling it out, but please complete that. Second, I wanna to respond to all the text messages I was receiving that some of the time when I was talking, I was muted. Um, I did not mute myself. Um, there was a message that came up. I assume it was a technical difficulty that it said I was muted, um, but it wasn't on my end. So. I apologize for those who did not hear it, but it wasn't, it was a, I am assuming a technical difficulty. Um, that's all, thank you. Alderman Bolton. 
You're muted, ma'am. Can it be heard now? Yes, ma'am. Great. So I want to extend condolence to um, Pastor Wallstone Francis and Pastor Gass and their congregation, and as well as a few constituents that have suffered in the first war to violence. And my prayers go out to you. And just for the city council, I need, let, need to let you all know I've been putting uh, cards in their box and indicating it's from all of us, not just me. Um, once again, I echo the same thing. Please complete the census and practice social distancing. And I also want to extend a special thank you to my citizens that call me every week and keep me updated to things that are going in the city. And I want to thank also Public Works, our police department and fire department for allowing me to constantly reach out to them and supporting those in the first ward. Also want to announce in the first ward on September 18th, there will be a uh, dumpster drop off at the location of Belvedere and the corner of McAllister. And as you know, the, the items that are not accepted is yard waste liquids, tree trunks, bricks and stones and rocks and hazardous uh, waste and uh, flammable material. So that dumpster will be provided for you. Um, so thank you for your support. Thank you. That'll be it. Alderman Seeger. You're muted. Yeah. Pat, you're muted. Where'd he go? We keep getting muted. Uh, I just want to touch base and let everyone know Glenrock Avenue is complete. Dugdale Road is complete from Jackson's, Jackson and Dugdale to 10th and Dugdale. And it looks good. It's about time. I want to thank everybody that worked on that that program on those roads because a lot of money, a lot of time and effort and hard work went into it. Thank you and everybody. Good night. Alderman Mosio. Yes, I said enough. Alderman Kirkwood. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Uh, first of all, I'd like to thank uh, the clerk, the mayor, the treasurer, uh, Mike Hewitt, uh, Susanna Figueroa, and all those people that came out to help with the Genesee Street Cleanup Party that we had on August the 29th. We'll be doing that again uh, on September the 26th. We had a Approximately 50 people attend that cleanup. Uh, we want to continue to do it in other neighborhoods. So once again, uh, that will occur on Saturday, September the 26th, starting at uh, nine o'clock on the corner of Corey and Genesee. Also want to echo what Alderman Taylor stated about the census. We need to make sure that we are filling out the census not only that, but we also need to make sure that people are registered to vote. Uh, I think this is a critical election, not only locally, but nationally. So we need to encourage uh, everyone in the city of Waukegan to get registered to vote and also understand that early voting starts September the 24th through Monday, November the 2nd. So you can early vote or you can mail in vote, but we need to make sure that we get everyone to exercise your right. Also, I want to make sure that uh, certainly in the fourth ward where there's alternating parking uh, that's being enforced, we need to make sure that people understand that because of the fact that uh, there's some streets you can't get down uh, because of the parking on, on both sides of the streets. So uh, certainly in the fourth ward, uh, you know, we are asking you to adhere to that alternate uh, parking. Uh, also, I want to point out to the residents in the fourth ward that those streets that are being uh, repaired, and I know that the garbage trucks are trying to get down to those streets, uh, we'll make sure that 
your garbage is picked up uh, on the pickup day, or they'll circle back around and make sure that the garbage uh, is picked up. Once again, if brush is left out, uh, you can certainly call the public works uh, number. You can take this number down for public works, 847-380-0944. Uh, once again, if you have any concerns, you can contact me at 844-484-9273. And once again, let's make sure that we're wearing our masks, washing our hands, and practicing physical distancing. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Newsom. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Uh, first of all, I would like to offer my condolences to Pastor uh, Arthur Gass um, on his passing. Uh, and the family of Mount Zion Missionary Baptist Church, and then Pastor Walsto Francis, his church family, and Shiloh Baptist Church. Um, their passing has truly left a void in their church family as well as the city of Waukegan. Um, Pastor Francis served on the Civil Service Commission for many years, leaving in 2018 due to his health. So, um, I just want to offer my condolences and uh, keep their family in our prayers. And then also, when we have a holiday on Monday and the garbage is supposed to be picked up on Monday, they normally supposed to be a day behind. Well, my garbage day is Tuesday. So the garbage came today. Instead of being one day supposed to be picked up Wednesday. So I heard them, so I got my garbage out, but I had a neighbor that wasn't home and um, was gonna put his recyclables out tonight. So we need to make sure if Advance is not going to pick up the garbage and be behind a day, I know we had it posted on the city's website that your garbage will be a day behind. Wasn't actually true today. So um, if I have any residents in the fifth ward and your normal garbage day is Tuesday and the garbage man came today instead of tomorrow, I need you to give me a call so I can make sure they come back by and uh, pick up your garbage. I don't know if the recyclables they're trying to make up for that time so that they don't have to work Saturday because they're gonna be you know, a day behind but anyway, if there's anyone in the fifth ward and your recyclables were missed today because they're supposed to come tomorrow, please give me a call and we'll make sure that those items uh, get picked up for you. And then also, um, I've been getting a lot of complaints about loud music, not only coming from cars, but coming from homes, uh, late at night, uh, early hours of the morning, um, still hearing some fireworks uh, going on. So I don't. I, I know that people are during this time of COVID. You know they're staying in, but they're they're doing a lot of other things that they normally probably would be doing away from home with the loud music since they got to stay home. But I just ask that you would be considerate of your neighbors. When you have your loud music, turn it down uh, so that you can hear it. Because a lot of times your neighbors don't want to hear your music down the street. And when you're coming through speeding with your cars, please be considerate because there's a lot of children out playing. And then also I got a complaint regarding our marijuana that was passed in January. Uh, it's legal now to smoke at your home, but uh, is it legal to disperse those fumes all through your neighborhood, you know? So uh, there was a complaint that a resident was smoking in their garage, which is at the front of the house. And when they have young kids walking by and such, you know, the aroma is all out, you know, where everyone can smell it. So I wanted to ask Mr. Long, is there anything in the statute that states 
you know, it's legal to smoke at home, but is it supposed to be out in the open or are there any other regulations that I can give to this neighborhood that's having these issues going on? Let me, uh, let me, let me send you a memo on that that you can pass along to your neighbor meeting. Okay, all right. Can I get a copy of that also? Just send it sure. to everybody, everybody. Everybody, okay. All right, and I think um, that's all I have. Thank you. That's it. All right, well, that's it. Uh, I just want to do a small correction. Uh, it looks like the, the number that was given out for public works um, might have been off. The correct number, just so everyone understands, is 847-360-0944. Again, uh, contact number to our public works department is 847-360-0944. As always, I appreciate all the hard work that you provide, provide the level of service to our residents, business community, and other business partners. You guys take care. I trust that you try to stay healthy, stay home when necessary. God bless you all. Walk kicking strong out. Motion by Alderman Florian, second by Alderman Taylor to adjourn. All those, in, any, any questions to the, oh, cool. I'm sorry. Any questions to the motion? Roll call, please. Alderman Turner. Aye. Alderman Rivera. Aye. Alderman Florian. Aye. Alderman Taylor. Alderman Taylor. She's been muted. Aye. Alderman Bolton. Aye. Alderman Seeger. Aye. Alderman Mosio. Aye. Alderman Kirkwood. Aye. Alderman Newsom. Aye. Thank you. Motion passing. Carrie. Good evening, everyone. Good, evening. Good night. God bless everyone. Thank you.